Patreons and wonderful viewers. What I'm going to share with you today is my research over months and years. This is going to be a super long film. I'm going to share everything I know about what Britain knows about UAP UFOs going back from the 1940s to about 30 years ago, which is also very interesting because what's happened in the last 30 years right now is still secret. What I'm going to share with you today comes from the Condine Report. This report was commissioned to draw a line under extensive UFO research that the UK Ministry of Defence had done from the 1940s to the early 2000s. It was published using a Freedom of Information Act request by Professor David Clark of Sheffield Hallam University, and it contains some of the most revealing facts about everything we know on aliens, how the RAF train their pilots with a UFO encounter. And I think the most staggering thing that it clearly states, and I'm just going to read it out for you today and you can draw your own conclusions, that the MOD in the UK, they also imply the US, Russia and China, have developed man-made craft and other devices, some incredible, based on the UAP research done originally in Great Britain. Now, you in the back shouting, yeah, but what about the real flying saucers? Yes, they are also addressed. This isn't just swamp gas. This isn't me trying to distract and ignore real aluminum UFOs hovering over a farmer's field in Wisconsin. That issue of what they might be is also addressed by this report. And their conclusions on extraterrestrials, yes, the British MOD have discussed, have a policy, a working paper, committees, researchers, scientific knowledge about extraterrestrials. I can tell you today there is a policy about Britain's approach towards alien visitors and extraterrestrials. And it's not what you expect. I can also tell you today that people like Stephen Hawking, were directly involved in drawing up that policy. I can also tell you that Britain, NATO, the US, China and Russia have UAP-based weapon systems. In their earliest and simplest form, purely to camouflage, to distract, as countermeasures, that technology based on UAP research went on to be incorporated in stealth. And I know that today that technology is so advanced it includes 3D projections of solid craft and experiments here in France dealing with the transmutation of a force of nature, a state of matter, into solid objects. So is what I'm saying just bollocks? No, you can go out today on the military procurement Amazon website, if it exists, and buy 
a loyal wingman false aircraft that flies alongside you based on this technology. You can probably even buy on eBay a 1980s or 1990s submarine launched torpedo codenamed Scaval, which utilizes this UAP technology to move through water with no friction, no drag, and at immense speed. So what's going on? How is all of this possible? What is the secret, very secret, and magic technology to bring this all about? I'm gonna tell it to you in one word, and that word is the fourth state of matter. Plasma. Nine, Foo Fighters. It is logical to question why few aircrew reports of Foo Fighters are currently received and of the currently reported phenomenon to question whether these are the same or not. There are a number of reasons which may be postulated for reduced numbers of Foo Fighter reports compared to the World War II period. During World War II, very large numbers of relatively slow military aircraft were flying for long sorties at an altitude of up to 20,000 feet, the majority of aircraft today, except light aircraft helicopters and FGA types on low flying, rapidly climb to economic flight levels. Hence, there are now fewer aircraft flying in the region where UAP are most likely to be seen. It is believed that the majority of plasma formations will be short-lived, reducing observation opportunities unless the aircrew happened to be in the right place at the right time. During World War II, all large military aircraft used many more Mark I eyeballs than currently is the case to view as much of the sky as possible. This was essential to avoid collision and to spot attacking aircraft. Lookout was kept from the tail, the astrodome, and by the waste gunners, all with opportunities for spotting any rearward following objects. 10. If it is postulated that the Foo Fighters are the same as UAP, with mainly neutral buoyancy, they probably move towards a set of attractive electrical forces at constant altitude it can be further suggested that a formation of large aircraft, as in World War II, would have presented an even greater electrical attraction force for any opposed charged mass. If the foregoing postulations are correct, then the inevitable conclusion is that today one should expect to find that the highest proportion of airborne encounters will be between the ground and 15,000 feet, UAP report could be expected to be concentrated where mainly ascending and descending aircraft are present, e.g. near airfields, air traffic zones, holding patterns and air corridors. 11. It is important to note that this is not suggested that aircraft are the cause of UAP. The presence of aircraft may encourage the presence of UAP once formed as it seems that the aircraft position and velocity can influence UAP activity. It is noted that there is an electrical current flow in an airframe due to the Earth's magnetic field. This is dependent upon the aircraft's size and its velocity. It's me. <laughs> the format of this film will be, I'll play you a bit from the Condine report, and then if it needs clarification or I want to say something, I'll pop up between sections. This is what I'd like to say here. So Foo Fighters were regularly seen in World War II and Winston Churchill demanded to know what they are. His worry, no doubt, was that they were German Nazi technology 
which could badly affect our pilots. So the Air Ministry, probably Tizard and his committee, looked into these strange things in the sky and concluded this. 80% of sightings could be explained, but 20% were unknown. That 20% they looked at really hard and came to the conclusion that they were some kind of plasma event. Were they induced by so many planes in the air? Were they caused by German high-powered radar systems that some people now think? Or were they just a force of nature that normally isn't seen, but with as the report says, so many Mark I eyeballs in the sky, people started seeing these balls of light. So to understand what the so-called Foo Fighters are, research was done into all the effects of plasma. And here's their report. 10. Charged plasmas in the atmosphere. There is strong evidence to suggest manned aircraft, satellites, and other more widely known atmospheric phenomenon accepted that the remaining UAP events are most likely due to highly charged plasma entities which can take more than one form and are apparently formed from more than one cause. These mainly buoyant objects can remain stationary or can move at variable velocity and flight profile under the influence of naturally occurring atmospheric fields and man-made fields. While known fields, magnetic, electrostatic and electromagnetic, are believed to play a significant part in the formation, sustenance and motion of UAP. The possibility of other physical effects, hereto not characterized, cannot be ruled out. There is much evidence to point to ball lightning as the source of formation of some plasmas which are reported as UAP. Also is evidence confirmed statistically to suggest that other plasma which are reported as UAP and not as plasma are formed by incompletely destroyed meteors, i.e. which have not completely burnt up, but have penetrated to low altitude, but not reached the Earth's surface as meteorites. H. More than one light can move together, leading to the supposition that they're on each extremity of a solid object that they have some sort of field present which regulates their spacing. I, lights can merge or split, giving, according to some reports, the impression that they are intelligent. See also paragraph 1, 5 below. J, between lights in a cluster, there is the appearance of blackness in outline. Three lights, for example, give the appearance of a solid triangle and for a rectangle. The outline of the shape can be clearly seen as blacker than the background, i.e. absolute absence of light. K. Lights may move towards a witness when approached. Chapter 2. Potential UAP hazards to aircraft. Rationale. 1. A brief investigation has been made into the potential of UAP events as possible hazards. With assistance from the Inspectorate of Flight Safety, RAF Bentley Pryor, all unexplained aircraft accidents on the RAF accident database were identified and then further filtered to isolate those which had apparently impacted the surface due to what appeared to be sudden and inappropriate control inputs by the crew. Apart from isolated reported encounters with what is apparently ball lightning, with both civil and some military aircraft, the investigation concentrated on the following scenarios. 
The possibility of air crew suddenly being confronted with the phenomenon immediately ahead of the aircraft, especially when flying in instrument meteorological conditions, IMC, the likely reaction of the pilot and the possibility of distraction or disorientation, the possibility of this occurring at very low altitudes, leaving little margin for a maneuver in proximity to the ground or sea, two, an examination of hundreds of UAP reports suggests that they may occur, are reported, by witnesses at low altitudes and often in relatively low visibility. The UAP, in arriving near the surface, has undoubtedly descended from a higher altitude, whatever its origins. Although it is assumed that UAP may be encountered at any altitude, as shown by infrequent reports from civil and military flight crews, there are no indications that any aircraft at high altitude has suffered an accident in UK airspace due to the presence of a UAP. 3. In the absence of any reports of surviving aircraft crews having to take violent avoiding action, the investigation followed the logic that if violent maneuvers has been carried out at low level by RAF aircraft, this could potentially have caused fatal accidents. If these cases exist, then there would be no crew report as to the cause of the sudden departure from the planned flight profile. However, none of the reports on file indicate a similar scenario for slow light aircraft or helicopters which might assume could have time to recover after a sudden event. There is a dearth of sudden event reports from slow and low aircraft. However, many factors can be shown to possibly influence the behavior of UAP, including it is believed the electrical charge on the aircraft. As charge is proportional to velocity and vehicle size, it may be the case that UAP are not generally seen in close proximity to small aircraft. This may explain the lack of reports. It should also be noted that many UAP events may be present of which crews are unaware because they may not be visible in daylight. They may not occur in the field of view of the cockpit. They occur fleetingly and are not seen on subsequent scans of the same spot. Air misses 14. All aircraft near miss reports filed with the joint CAA and Air Prox section, JAS, at Uxbridge are rigorously investigated. On a small number of occasions, the identity of one of the conflicting objects is never explained. Despite exhaustive inquiries by a working group, with full access to all AIS military and CAA resources. These include careful track analysis, weather, other flight plans, radar contacts, and cockpit air traffic control voice recordings. Seven such events have occurred in the past 10 years, Table 2-1. Based on inquiry reports, list examples from which the following observations are made. If an object is visually small or not fully opaque, e.g. in an indistinct form, even gaseous, it will not be seen in daylight until it is very close. The nature of close proximity misses at high closing speeds is that encounters are fleeting, a few seconds at most. By the time the presence of an object is noted visually and a possible collision conflict is realized, indeed apparently imminent, it is too late for evasive maneuver. If an object is a plasma type, it may not be seen on civil aircraft radar. A non-transponding target, if detected, may be taken to be due to weather and disregarded. Unexplained accidents over the past 30 years, some 128 RAF aircraft accidents have not been completely explained. Those not occurring in the UK ADR 
have been ignored. A careful examination has shown that many can be rejected from the UAP hypothesis because there was adequate evidence to show that some form of mechanical event was the cause, which was nevertheless not fully resolved. Some accidents occurred in close proximity to airfields, where other observers should have noticed a UAP if one was present. Some accidents happened away from base, but well within visual range of other cooperating aircraft, e.g. on CAP or low-altitude fighter affiliation exercises or near ships. 25. In most near-miss situations in daylight, the object was always too close to take evasive action, and it passed very close to the aircraft and no damage was found after landing. Descriptions were very similar to the many thousands received from surface observers, including the black objects about the size of small fighters, e.g. a hawker hawk size. In so advising, it should be stressed that despite the recent increase in UAP events, the probability of encountering a UAP remains very low. No attempt should be made to outmaneuver a UAP during interception. At higher altitudes, although UAP appear to be benign to civil air traffic, pilots should be advised not to maneuver other than to place the object astern if possible. That was very revealing. It moves the whole world of UFO research further forward. UFOs, UAPs are real. The RAF even have a policy for pilots when they encounter a UAP UFO. What the hell are the Americans playing at? They're still going, we don't know what they are. Although, of course, I believe they do know what they are. So what you just heard is the safety briefing for pilots when they encounter a UFO. The next part is... We need to understand, as the military, what plasma really is. And could there be a military application for this fourth state of matter? 13. A plasma is the fourth state of matter, comprising charged particles, electrons and ions. Plasmas in a magnetic field form a particular anisotropic media, in which various electromagnetic and electrostatic waves can propagate. The electron plasma frequency can be determined from the electron plasma density. An ion plasma density also exists, which, because of the ion mass, is at a much higher frequency than the electron plasma frequency. It is often forgotten that the magnetosphere of the Earth comprises low-density plasmas and weak magnetic fields. While interest in radiation phenomenon in plasmas has become a topic of interest in space communications, e.g. to and from spacecraft, in the UAP context, the interest is in ionized plasmas which become visible. It can be shown in anisotropic plasma wave fronts that cylindrical and cone-shaped types can be produced from point oscillating sources, in addition to standard spherical wave fronts. This may be relevant to some reported UAP events. Chapter 4. Potential Related Military Technology 1. As a necessary adjunct to UAP database construction, a large number of scientific papers were researched for any relevant information on atmospheric natural phenomenon because of the distinct possibility of this being misinterpreted or misrepresented as UAP. It was envisaged that as the phenomenon can cause radar alarms and visual distraction, that a deeper knowledge of the effect might reveal a possible military application that a hostile power, given the ability to reproduce the same effects, might exploit, possibly as some sort of decoy or 
countermeasure. At the same time, the possibility of man-made objects causing UAP events necessitated a brief survey at working papers numbers 9, 14, 15 and 17 of the clearly possible misreporting of aircraft, black programs or otherwise, satellites, balloons, etc. The possibility of air objects within Earth's atmosphere with characteristics beyond or limits of the current technological capability of any of Earth's aerospace industries having been considered briefly at Chapter 2 and at Working Paper 6. A brief examination of whether the phenomenon could be replicated and whether or not any other nation was attempting to exploit the same or derivatives of the phenomenon is reported at Volume 3. Generation of Plasma Formations Introduction 1. Avramenko Avramenko was working on plasma formation during the Cold War as a source of high-power radiation, especially to produce long-lived plasma formations. The properties developed were high density, low optical emissions, and retention of shape in an airflow up to 200 meters per second. These were supposedly analogues of ball lightning, but were clearly part of the Soviet Union HP microwave weapon program. The color of the plasma was light blue in air. In a water aerosol, a near spherical shape was formed. Avramenko also showed under laboratory conditions that energetic plasma formations, EFP, could pass through obstacles with holes in them. For example, holes in rods, spheres, discs, or plates. The EFP can pass through a much smaller hole than its dimensions, reforming on the other side without dividing into parts. This suggests that the plasma contains forces similar to surface tension or mutual attraction of the particles forming the medium. Experiments proved that pressures were possible up to 25 torr before breakup. Strangely, the time taken for completion of the motion through the aperture apparently depends not only on the hole diameter and length, e.g. when passing through a tube, but also on the material. For example, when the length of a glass tube was lengthened by a factor of 10, the transmit time was reduced by 40%. In diamagnetic material, the time was reduced by... 25%. 25%. 2. In the UAP context, the implications are that, as often reported in practice by many witnesses, a UAP can enter a room or even an aircraft through a small aperture relative to its size. It can achieve this by either puncturing a hole through a material or frighteningly to a witness entering through a door, chimney, keyhole, etc. redacted. 3. Signature control. Experiments, too, have also been made into the cloaking application of selective plasmas by modifying the plasma ionization, i.e. its density, so as to either not to reflect the incident RF or partially to do so and hence to prevent or reduce the probability of target detection. In diametric material, the time was reduced by 25%. The propagation of these plasmas in a transverse magnetic or electric fields was not accompanied by a noticeable deflection of the plasma in the experimental channel. 4. In the experimental cases, the energy distribution within the plasma was found to be asymmetric and with rapid fall-off at the skirts. This may not, of course, be the case in the UAP context, where further variation may occur in a single core plasma and complex plasma densities, and the other probable E or H field distribution may exist in multiple chord formations, hence the field's fluxes from EFP can be expected to be distributed not only by heat flux in the order of about 
5 times 10 watts centimetre squared, where the core temperature can be 20,000 to 30,000 K, but as visible an IR radiation. 5. It is noted, and again especially relevant to the UAP context, that the overall plasma body density can be close to that of the surrounding air, even though the density of the charged particles themselves is high, as is the energy density. 6. In summary, the plasma density is such that, if formed by whatever means, in the atmosphere is likely to float or bob because of the close relative density of the surrounding air, climb or descend slowly unless acted upon by very strong external potential differences seen in the darting towards objects of differential potential, often electrical or other earthed pylons or isolated conductors or towards vehicles in open ground especially on exposed high moorland or, for example, on mountain roads. Exhibit erratic motion caused by the interaction of the total body charge with other surrounding magnetic and electrical fields. Be attracted towards areas where the electrical activity in the form of electrostatic charges may be modified by the presence of intense air vehicle activity. Corona discharge. The corona discharge from the surface of objects can ensure the stability of low-density objects in the air. When the charge formation approaches a conducting object, the discharge of a bipolarity charged shell would increase. This is normally accompanied by an electrical wind, which in laboratory conditions can be shown to exceed 2 meters per second. The reactive effect produced by the electric wind is capable of balancing the mirror reflection and gravitation forces. Did you just hear that? They snuck that one in. Plasma can balance gravitational forces? Really? That's very revealing of what Britain was working on. But what about everybody else in the world? Foreign Military Interest 9. Although the study specify a UK focus, based on the reports held, UAP are by no means confined to UK airspace. Other NATO nations, China, Russia and elsewhere, frequently report the most extreme and puzzling incidents in the open press. DI-55 does not have access to other governments' classified reports as there is no formal intelligence exchange on this topic. However, redacted are known to have at least one member of staff active in this area. Similarly, at least two other scientists are active in redacted. Many other redacted scientists have published papers on closely related subjects and the conclusions from studying these are of importance to the UK findings. 9. FSU Russian Experimental Vehicle In 1980, Candidate of Technical Sciences submitted an invention of UFO-like shape which was based on superconducting storage rings one vertical and one horizontally orientated. Electrodes assembled into several sections terminate outside the craft and create electrical discharges in the flying medium. The discharge current between the electrodes is controlled in some way by a current flow from a superconducting winding and thrust is produced. The vertical section of the electrodes is switched off for takeoff and the horizontal sections are used for manoeuvring. Further USSR reports speak of seeing unknown and experimental vehicles, UAP devices, which rotate around an axis and claim that the rotation of a plasma sheath created an additional magnetic field 
pulsating lights were obtained from the plasma discharges. As the pulsating increased, the velocity of the object increased. The higher the plasma discharges, the higher the acceleration and speeds were adapted. Are you, like me, getting a bit of a picture now of what's going on with plasma research worldwide? So the next obvious thing to understand as a scientist is, do plasmas have any negative effects on human physiology? Overview of magnetic field effects on humans. Two, the fields investigated for medical purposes in Canada have some common characteristics and the scenario which in close encounters repeatedly produces alien and similar descriptions may be the result of the close proximity of one or more of these field types. Only on rare occasions when lights are seen at very close range, probably within 10 to 20 meters outdoors or within the same room indoors, do reports change from purely visual events to reports of exceptional experiences and descriptions. It is therefore deducted that if an observer is exposed in the open to a close encounter, much closer than the ufologist in C. E1, then they are likely to come within the influence of a field or fields. It seems likely that in particular, if, as described at working papers number 1 and 25, a hot spot from the charged mass irritates the witness, often described as a beam of light, then extra extraordinary descriptions follow. There seems to be strong evidence from the Canadian medical measurements that at least one component of the field is magnetic in nature and modulated, causing excitation of the brain's temporal lobes. It also seems significant that when similar objects are approached, when in a road vehicle or aircraft, the more extreme experiences are not reported. Experience number one, felt dizzy or odd. Two, felt presence of someone or something. Three, felt tingling sensations. Four, saw vivid images. Five, there were pleasant vibrations. Six, I felt as if I had left my own body. Seven, I experienced anger. Eight, experienced sadness. Nine, I heard a ticking sound. Ten, there were odd smells. Eleven, there were odd tastes in my mouth. Twelve, I felt as though I was somewhere else. So as promised at the beginning of this very long film, what about the aluminium UFOs and the aliens? Yeah, I will address it now. Or the MOD, the Ministry of Defence in the UK, will tell you their policy on aliens. UK secret, UK eyes only, unclassified for extraterrestrials. The conventional scientific expectation when searching for extraterrestrial life is that this might be revealed by searching for oxygen, nitrogen and other specific spectral lines. Of course, this supposition is based possibly, probably, erroneously on the assumption that there could only be biological life elsewhere in the form which we conventionally understand it. So far unsuccessfully, the USA has spent millions of dollars in the SETI program in this search. Lateral thinking soon shows that any other inhabited part of the universe may conceivably contain entities which bear no resemblance to ourselves whatsoever. Clearly, if they exist, they may not breathe as humans or have any of the usual attributes. Hence, one could argue they could perhaps naturally withstand the enormous gravity forces involved in the maneuvers described. The logic soon changes again when it is suggested that, in the limit, these entities may have no mass. 
Several UAP UFO researchers have concluded, for example, based on what they have taken to be reliable incident reports, that these entities must also have the ability to materialize and dematerialize. Further, the reported aerodynamic gymnastics implies that their technology of using apparently near dragless, noiseless flight can be achieved most of the time. All these exceptional characteristics can be explained if the objects are gaseous, buoyant, charged plasma. Here is the British view towards meeting and dealing with extraterrestrials. This is a published document based on serious scientific and deep thinking. What do we do if and when the aliens visit planet Earth? The conclusion is one, we would all as a planet know when aliens come to visit because it probably will be the last thing we ever know about. The UK report states that if aliens have the technical knowledge to cross inter galactic distances. The nearest star is light years away. The nearest habitable planet by intelligent space traveling aliens is probably hundreds of thousands of light years away from Earth. No species that we could even imagine could live hundreds of thousands of years or even invest the time, hundreds of thousands of years, to cross from their space to visit Earth. Unless, and this is their chilling conclusion, they want something that we've got. Liquid water, which is pretty unique, minerals, or something else from our planet. They don't want us and if or when we as a planet know that they're here we won't understand them. Avi Loeb summed this up. If you showed ancient humans an iPhone they would assess it in their current terms. They would say it's a shiny rock. And that's exactly what the alien craft and technology will look like to us. It won't be like anything we know. So the other big conclusion and advice from some very well-known top minds is stop telling them we're here. <laughs> it's vital that we keep quiet about our presence on this beautiful planet we call Earth. But hang on, what about all the stuff that we've already sent out? I'm always hearing that the aliens will pick up the I Love Lucy show or early radio broadcast. Remember the film Contact talked about that. Well, probably, thankfully, that's not going to happen because even at the speed of a light, the first episode of Star Trek, made in 1967, is only a few miles, thousands of miles, from planet Earth. It is nowhere near being watched on an alien iPad. But we all need to keep our eyes on the skies because you never know when they might turn up. Thank you very much for getting to this part of the film, to sitting through some, I think, fascinating, old but interesting research that reveals the true nature 
of research into plasma. I sincerely hope that your 2022 is slightly better than our 2020-21. Thank you for being loyal viewers. Thank you for becoming Patreons. Thank you for supporting me doing things that normal media won't touch with a barge pole because the truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.